just walking down the lane, past the neighbor. Jill and Billy live right there. It's a funny day. I don't have that rubber shirt on. It's a funny day. It's kind of hot for one minute and then cool and and then too bright without sunglasses and then too dark with sunglasses. Funny day. And there's the sun again. Oh my gosh. Like warm shirt on, warm shirt off, t-shirt on, t-shirt off. Glasses on, glasses off. I guess you can't really do t-shirt off. That would be pretty silly walking around here in my bra. Anyway, we're going in there. Oh, I smell fresh hay. Oh, that's gonna be super. Let's go. It's beautiful and windy. A little bit on the warm and humid side. There's an air show happening, and yesterday, nine red arrows flew by. It wasn't nine red arrows, it was ten red arrows. And it was like a V-shaped formation of nine of them, and there were three fighter jets in, in, that, in that central V part. It was so cool, and the ninth one was flying somewhere above them. And then I thought, oh, I'm just going to have a, a look at the pictures. And the picture came from that, the tenth one, not the ninth one, the tenth one. That was there. It was just amazing. Well, why am walking fields? Well, one thing that Robbie has some people have come over and he has to map um, a guy's engine. And so I thought, oh, this is a good time for me to go for a walk. Second thing is my ankle's doing much better. And so I thought I should exercise it a little bit. Yeah, lose those 10 pounds. <laughs> and um, third thing is I wanted to get an ash branch that I could carve into a magic wand <laughs> anyway the ash trees are just in the bunny field up ahead this is the first field it's quite a long one to walk through it takes a few minutes and um, then there's the two bunny fields on either side of this field and um, that's where there's a grove of ash trees. So we'll just go and ask an ash tree if it's okay if we have a branch. Let's see what the ash tree says. Here they are. Here's the ash. Some ash trees. Now the way you ask an ash tree for a branch, if you look at a branch and rub a new sapling, and then you just silently ask if it's okay. And if you feel peace, if you feel peace, then it's okay. Well, I have two sticks, two nice ash sticks from two different trees. Oh, look, look, the red arrows. There they are. Oh my gosh, did you guys see that? I don't know why I'm so excited about those darn planes. I just love them. I love the way they fly in formation. It's just so brilliant. This time they only had the two fighter jets. Yesterday they had three fighter jets. Oh, I'm gonna have to really seriously do something with my fringe. It's just way too long. Anyway, um, oh my gosh, how lucky. That's the second time I've seen them. Wow. <laughs> I was just thinking how much I love walking past the hedgerows. These are, all right, I'm up at the hedge. I'm five, six. This is ridiculous. It's like a 20 foot tall hedge. And it's hawthorn and crab apple and um, damson plum. All sorts of greenery. And there's one huge willow just over here. Two huge willows just over there. And blackberries. There's blackberries in the hedge. And. Um, Wild roses, look, there's wild roses right here. I hear the red kites whistling. 
Robert whistles back at them. And there's this weed, and this weed is terrible. It's so sticky. It's like, it sticks to everything, and the seeds stick. And you carry it and spread it around. God, they're loud, the red kites are beautiful. I've never known them to be this loud, except because they've probably mown this field. They're after all the mice. I wish one would fly overhead so I could catch a picture of it for you. Maybe we'll go up to the um, meadow later, or tomorrow, and um, I'll see if I can get some kite to action. So here's an interesting part about blocking. Yes, Theo's on the table. So now what I have is Theo. <laughs> Theo, my carving tools. Three nice sticks. I think I'll, I'll start with this one here. Theo's sniffing them. Do you want me to throw you a stick? Yeah. And I have absolutely no idea where to put the camera. So, let's see. If I put it here, you could sort of see what I'm doing. That might work. Unless Theo decides to investigate and knock it over. Alright, well, first thing I have to do is take off all of all of this stuff now. Which which tool did I do that with last year? That one will work. Actually I might have just used I might have just used this one. Yeah, that one will work just fine. So I just have to take all the bark off <coughs> before I can carve. Well, that's me done. I've taken off all the bark. It was really easy with this young sapwood. Um, super, super easy. And now I've brought down my, um, gotta be careful with these wood carving set because I need some serious chisels to take some of the um, bits of the twigs off and this is a beautiful set that William, my friend William gave it to me last year as well as a beautiful piece of cedar to carve something with so I'm just going to use one of these chisels and um, take off all these, smooth them, smooth them out. Unfortunately, I don't know if I can do that camera down. I can't see it. Can you see it? Probably not. Okay, well, I shall try my best. Okay, glasses on. Fingers out of the way. Which one do I feel lucky with? This, maybe this curved one. I'm not very good at this, you guys, so this is a, this is an experiment to see how I do. When you're carving wood, you always carve away from you never towards you. Happily this ash is pretty darn soft. Still, it's gonna go flying out of my hands, I know, because it's also very wet. Um, so, okay, so that's a bit successful. There we go. And another one. Come on, you. No, that was not so successful. I wonder if my ancient secateurs would do a better job. No, probably not. Can't really get it down. Oh, maybe this one. You know what it's like when you have that vision in your head and then your piece of art or your drawing or carving isn't really turning out the way you want it to turn out. Just got to persevere. Oh. Yeah, it's never as easy as all that. But my aunt used to say, talent doesn't fall from the sky and hit you on the head. It doesn't translate. <laughs> Sounds better in Czech. Meaning that, oops, that was sharp. That it's all earned. Okay, what about this one? I think this one might do a better job. It's kind of a straight one. I'm very happy to have anybody who does any kind of woodworking correct me. I'm sure I should put it in a lathe and not, so, not working so well. 
Um, there's scoopy ones. There's a sort of a fishtail one. That's an interesting one. I like that one. I wonder if that one's going to work. Maybe I just need to... Oh, that one worked. Maybe I need to um, sharpen it. So maybe when Robbie gets back, I'm just going to say, can he run this over to the lathe and sharpen these guys? Maybe that's the trouble. Maybe I sat around in my studio in the drawer. Um, but I'm getting somewhere. Keeping an eye out on the sky out there. It looks a little menacing. Okay, you know what? I think that I'm going to put these away. Oops, they go in here. And I guess, honestly, I think I'm going to do better with my little um, carving set. These guys here. And my exacto knife which I'm sort of used to handling already. Yes, I know, I'm going against my finger. Hmm. The wind is blowing up a storm and it's close. Oh jeez, everything's going flying. In a minute, I'm gonna knock over this camera. But look, 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 it's working. I'm getting it, getting it to um, a sort of a more, a straighter sort of a stick. And I suppose if you're carving runes into an ash stick, I suppose it doesn't really matter if it has a few bubbles on it or what have you. I'm just gonna get it to um, sort of a reasonable shape and then I think it'll be good. There we go. That's much better. I like that. I can't remember if the one I carved last year, last summer, if that one is... Um, smooth or if it's got little branch bits on it and it's somewhere in Vancouver I'm not sure where it is actually I haven't seen it for a while well, I put it away and I put it away somewhere really clever like, you know you go oh it'll be really good here and then you completely forget where you put it I do that a lot Oh wow, this is really working nicely. I'm really pleased with this. I'm gonna have to sharpen the lino cutting tools after this though. That's beautiful, okay. How's this one? This one's down quite a bit too. Of course it would help if I move things out of the way. There, I'm really happy with this. Now to just sand it down a little bit, or just smooth it out a little bit, and um, get the runic alphabet. Maybe I'll just work on this one still. And this one. Alright, so I've got this nice and smooth. Um, I took a little bit of sandpaper, sanded it down a little bit as well. Um, I've got my iPad here. I don't know if you can see it, but I've got the Elder um, Futhark. How do you pronounce that? How do you pronounce that? A, a Nordic term like that. I don't even know. Anyway, um, I might just do the oldest runes on this again. Or I was thinking, what about something like a snake or carve something else into it? I don't know. I'll think about it. Okay, here we go. We have a runic alphabet. I've drawn it on my magic wand. Just like that. And now I'm going to carve it in there using my carving tools. I don't know why I have a raven's feather. It just seemed appropriate to have a raven's feather. feather. 
first rune. Get it at those angles. Maybe this way. And if this camera focuses, there is the first rune roughly cut. So carrying on with the runes, I've decided to use a bit of a wider one. The one I was using before was quite narrow. And so this one is making the job a little bit faster. Um, still, this is fresh wood, so it's incredibly slippy. So it's taking a lot of control to carve in um, and then I'm just using my feather to get rid of the little stubble. That's kind of cool. I like using crow's feathers. Except this wind is really picked up. I get my grain. Um, and the awkward thing is, you know, getting getting it in on the angles. It just takes a little bit of wiggling and a steady hand and not to allow it to slip. Or when it does slip, then just to pull up like that so it doesn't damage the rest of the fresh wood. Otherwise we'll have a very strange looking rune. So there we go. First rune, there's the second, there's the third, moving down the stick, here's the fourth, it's kind of like an F shape. So just anchor this down against the picnic bench and I'll just really gently work my way up of the straight line. I think there's, um, here's a good one, this angled one. So this angled one is really good for taking the top cut so I don't pull up into the wood. There we go. Um, and now this rune has two lines, like a, like a slanted F. Yes, I know my thumb is there. <laughs> Don't cut towards your finger. Do as I say, not as I do. That's really weird. You know, people who've set up their wood turning studios with um, things like clamps and things like that to hold these projects. They're the clever ones. I don't have a wood turning studio, so I don't have clamps. I suppose I could go and raid some of Robbie's tools. Oh yeah, I was um, having a bath this morning and after my bath I thought, oh, where are the Q-tips, you know, the cotton buds in the garage. Uh, he's expropriating my Q-tips. I suppose I could expropriate one of his holes. Ah, there's our next rune right there. Nice. Oh, I like this one. It's like a like an R. R for Robbie. An R for Roth. Got everybody in the family here. It's really nice to 
have a runic alphabet. I don't know why, it just, it just reminds me of, you know, fairies and, and druids and the earth and being close to the earth and things like that. Not that, you know, it's something that I practice and I know that there are a lot of druids out there in England and, and they really go in for the solstice and I'll, I don't, I don't know the first thing about it. But I like having a piece of nature around me, a little bit of something ancient. Uh, this is the tough one, getting on the backwards line. Because there's really nothing to hold on, onto underneath yet. There we go. And it's really oddly satisfying to make yourself something like a magic wand. Okay, and now the stroke is a bit of a longer stroke up to complete the R. I don't think it's an R. Let me look on the um, iPad what it says. It says it is a... Oh, it is an R. But the F that I just did is an, actually an A. I wonder what that sounded like. You guys ever heard anybody speak in a druid, in a, druid a runic alphabet? I wonder if it's even pronounceable. I suppose it must be. Somebody must have read it. There it is. There's the next one. There's our R. And now for K. And it looks kind of like like a C or a bracket that's just pointed or one like the point of an arrow. If you were to draw an arrow going this way. And that apparently is a K. There we go. There's the one backwards one again. I love this picnic table because I can sort of wedge the piece that I'm working on up against one of the boards and yeah I know don't carve into my hand. It's just so hard to hold it you know. And there we go. And now comes the G, which is actually an X. Are you guys bored yet? Should I turn the camera off and just do this and then show you later? <laughs> also, doing something like this, cutting across the grain of the wood, is very satisfying and not so slippy as cutting with the grain of wood. Oop, there goes my crow's feather. Stay. Oops. <laughs> I just made, make a huge mess of this, but who cares? It's all in fun. Now how am I going to get this other stroke? Maybe this way. Anchor it in here. I could probably just about carve this one like this. There's the one half of the X. And now for the other part. There we go. Well, I brought my magic wand up into the studio. This is too bright outside for you to see it. It's probably too bright in here to see it also. But can you see the runes curved all the way up it like that? Used a bit of sandpaper to smooth it out. It's really, really nice touching all these runes, holding it in my hand. They go about a quarter of a turn each, all the way down to where there's a handle. And um, I might rub some wax into it. And th I think that the more I touch it, the more oils from my hands will absorb in and it'll become stained. Anyway, there it is. I'm just going to leave it on my drawing table to dry. <laughs>